Supercross looks pretty awesome like this. Let me show you first the front of the building, pardon the mesh. Look at that crowd. Look how many cars are in the distance here. Big, big crowd, especially impressive considering how bad, bad, bad the weather was. Originally, we had a 5.30 a.m. schedule for track walk this morning. They actually pushed that back. I think because nobody wanted to be here at 5.30 a.m. Well, good thing they didn't have a 5.30 a.m. track walk because at exactly 5.30 a.m. it started raining here hard. I was actually staying in a motorhome uh, out <clears throat> in the uh, camping area and it was so loud you could barely even sleep and it rained for about four hours like that. But, so I always say, it's a tradition, do not ever look at the forecast on a Tuesday before a race and predict a mudder because they have tarps over the track and they know how to pump the track for mud. And the rain stopped and by about noon it was practically sunny. Tarps were pulled off. Yes, the rain had an impact but it was not a mudder. No one's ever gonna remember the great mud race of 2022 Atlanta, but they might just remember it being a great race. And it starts with the 250 East-West Showdown. I'll get to that in a moment, but first we're going to talk about Race Tech. That's our sponsor, Gold Valves. Keep your suspension plusher, better bottom resistance. Do you guys have a good time? Yes, sir. Is it a good race? It's awesome, right? See? Good times. Not a mud race either, was it? Just a good race. Good race. Exactly. These rest showdown. Do you like the Lawrence's? I, I do. Okay, so you're down. You're down. You're down with Hunter though? Yes, I like yes. Okay, you'll take off. You're back. We had all we had all this jet versus Craig hype. What are you Hunter. doing at GNCC next? <sighs> I missed my chances, these local ones for me. Right. Camp Coker would have been good, right. but I was in St. Louis. Glad you had a good time. I'll be at a GNCC again, everybody. Anyway, race tech, you know your suspension will be plusher, better bottom your resistance, more traction. But the best part is made in the USA race tech components. So we don't have supply chain issues like a lot of other industries around the world that's made in the USA. Go to racetech.com. This didn't bring me all the way down to the bottom. Darn it, I gotta get this elevator back open. This elevator hates me. <sighs> Give me a second. So yes, the big story coming into this race is the East-West Showdown. And as I said on the show yesterday, gotta go to L, not one. Who do you think's gonna win, Craig or Jet? Don't do that, don't do that, because most of the time in these races, you get a random winner. The points leaders either have too much pressure or they're managing points, whatever it may be. Hunter Lawrence was a solid pick. He didn't exactly think so himself. So can you win or is it only between two guys? No, yeah. wait, Jack, I don't think we Okay. We were joking yesterday. Uh, he got a good start. It was a good battle early with him and Joe Shimoda. That's the best we've seen Shimoda ride in a while. Uh, but I don't know if Shimoda had the full 15 minutes in him. Remember, he was actually out with a big injury from most of the West break earlier in the year. Uh, Christian Craig was nowhere off the start. Craig came all the way back. Uh, Jet Lawrence was challenging Hunter for second. He crashed in the turn after the whoops. And eventually Hunter got the lead from Joe. And the gap was about a second and a half. And Craig couldn't run Hunter down. They were yo-yoing. Craig would close in a 10th. Hunter would pull away a 10th. Uh, Craig eventually did tip over and crash. Hi. Craig eventually did tip over and crash, but I want to make this clear. He wasn't closing in on Hunter. Hunter might have been able to hold off on Merritt's even without the crash anyway. So it was an impressive performance for Hunter Lawrence to show that uh, he might not be the points leader in either division, but that doesn't mean he cannot win the thing. And by the way, if you take the Hunter Lawrence crash while running second at Anaheim three and the whoops out, we would have a full on knockdown drag out championship battle between him and Craig. He's got three wins on the year and two in a row. Hunter, highly underrated as a supercross rider. We've really got to start talking about, he's not Jet's brother, he's not an outdoor guy, he's just good at everything. Good for him to take that win. And uh, Jet Lawrence is able to rally all the way back up to third. Craig a solid run in second. And uh, there's still a bit of a points battle there. Craig had to you know, avoid the big, big mistake to not give uh, many, many points back to Hunter. We'll go to the pits in a second, but I'll walk this crazy track. This is gonna hurt. Oh, not so bad. Please tell me this gate's gonna be open over here. But let's talk about the supersized track. I mentioned the huge jumps on the pre-show yesterday. They turned the 110 foot jump into a 80 foot jump and they uh, <clears throat> took the uh, double wall jump double and just turned it into a single and another single. Yeah, guys. Wow. It's Damon Bradshaw. What's up? Yeah, somewhere. Hang on. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so, anyways, it's just I just annoying. We were sitting at a table. What the heck, dude? Not arguing. I'm trying to solve. I want to figure out what happened. 
So there it we'll is. Say it was cool. Thank you. Go all the way down to that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. We went across the track. So anyway, uh, the supersized track was a little bit shrunk down, but it still was a lot different as far as speeds go. And the 450 class, as we've been saying all year, you know, Eli Tomac might have a huge points lead, but the battle for the wins is still up for grabs in the class, even more so than it used to be. You know, it's not like we're going to the race and you just know Tomac's going to win, even though he's won the most this year. Oh, well, we had to start with just about all the players up front. Justin Barsha, Cooper Webb, who was back, Sexton, Anderson, Tomac, Malcolm Stewart, a good start. Marvin Muskan did go down on the first lap, so that knocked him out of it. But it was a great uh, tussle, a great battle early on. Sexton able to get the lead, pulling away. Sexton looked unbelievable in practice, unbelievable in the heat race, unbelievable while leading the main event. You've heard this story before, right? And then he fell down. You heard that one before too, right? And uh, that was all that Jason Anderson needed. Now, Tomac was really weird. He had a bad beginning of lap two where he lost positions to both Anderson and Webb, lost a bunch of ground. He eventually recovered, rode well, but by then Anderson wasn't too far gone. Tomac would take the measure of Webb late in the race to take over second. And Sexton, what a comeback. He would crash again, or a, a case real bad uh, rhythm. Still came all the way back and got Webb with two to go to get up on the podium. There's no doubt that Sexton was the fastest rider, but he didn't win because he fell. I know, you've heard that one before. And how about Anderson? Good bounce back after a couple of rough weeks uh, to get another victory.